Greetings and blessings, YouTube. This is John the Jansenist, also known as Hell's Unicorn. And this particular blog that I'm doing basically applies equally to both channels, so it will be uploaded on both the John the Jansenist channel and the Hell's Unicorn channel. And this blog is basically going to go through the question of hypocrisy. This is something that commonly comes up in all areas and modes of life. It's a uniquely human affliction, if for no other reason than the fact that only we as human beings are capable of recognizing it when it occurs, and it is also something that is universally observed whenever we see people in action. And we are very quick to point it out in others, and we're very rarely willing to admit it in ourselves. One could basically chalk it up to human nature and simply leave it at that. But in the recent weeks where I've come to observe the various drama that goes on here on YouTube, a drama that I rarely, if ever, participate in because I've always seen myself more as an observer than an actual participant in such things, I've sort of come to a certain perspective on this that I wanted to kind of share with everybody. And I was particularly moved by the cases of uh, Nephilim Free and the things going on in his life, which I'm not going to get on into right now. That's something that is readily knowable through other videos, both by his friends and even more so by his enemies. And also the recent drama surrounding Coughlin and the Peach and uh, the less than, let's just say, adult level of maturity that's been going on amongst all parties in Congress on that issue, and also the recent turn of events between the Dead Patriot and Monograph, which was kind of the last instance that really inspired me to get into this. I kicked off this video with a quote from the Bible. This was taken from Romans 7.19, and it states, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. This is something that will probably hold more interest to those who actually believe in the Word of God than it does for those who don't believe in it. But I'm offering it up to those who don't believe also as a philosophical statement by a learned man who was, in essence, coming to an understanding about his place in the world and his relationship with everything around him. But for those who are believers, obviously, the natural theological context applies. The person who said this, St. Paul, formerly Saul, is a model answer in the ideal human being from a context of piety. It is a person who devoted his entire life to attempting, in attempting to perfect his own behavior, his own mannerisms, his own sense of morality. He wanted, in essence, to become perfected. And what he discovered through the course of his time traveling and preaching to others as an apostle of Jesus Christ is that that which he meant to do, that's that which he knew in his heart he should do, he would always fail in doing. How badly he would fail in this would vary from time to time, but he was generally perfect, you know, fully convinced that he was unable to fulfill that which he intended to do. And by the same token, that which he did not intend to happen would happen. And that is essentially what we observe time and time again. And it has brought me to a unique perspective on my own beliefs. As most of you who are familiar with both of my channels know, I am a practicing Jansenist, which is a theology that is all but dead. I mean, you can find traces of it in certain conservative conclaves of Catholicism in France and in the old Catholic Church of Holland amongst its most conservative proponents, but it's basically viewed as an archaic dinosaur variant of Christianity that's been dead for centuries. But the outlook that it gives someone who practices it has a lot to offer. And again, most people 
are sort of driven away by it because it comes off as being very bleak. It sees mankind as inherently hypocritical, inherently unable to do anything good, and essentially the only way we can come to any good is by coming to a state of complete and total contrition, being so contrite, so humbled, that we have to ask for something outside of ourselves in order to correct these things that are in our lives because we can't do it on our own. And even when we make this request, even if we come to a belief, a unfailing belief in, the, in a higher power, we still cannot fulfill that which we would hope to do, and we still find ourselves doing the things which we know that we ought not do. This is something that is present even at the most conservative fringes of monastic Christianity, the people that seclude themselves, put, take themselves into conclu uh, seclusion in a, you know, basically in a solitary wing of a monastery and devote their entire lives to silent prayer, are still essentially haunted by this reality. And they don't escape it in this life. This is a permanent condition. And the view of the Jansenist and also the view of the Calvinist coming from the Protestant perspective is that this is something that is not perfected even in the most contrite and the most God-loving believer until after his death. So it stands to reason that whether you're coming from a religious perspective or a non-religious perspective, that there is little profit in dwelling upon the hypocritical actions of other human beings. There should be consequences for them, but the idea that we dwell upon them, that we hold grudges, that we constantly come at one another with them for the sake of some form of retribution, it's, it's a hopeless and endless cycle. And there is so much more that can be gained from becoming the bigger person and letting things slide. And learning to understand that people are occasionally going to mess up and that we have to learn to cope with it in other ways than just then trying to tear each other down and trying to one-up each other for as saint paul also said there is not a decent man among you no not one until next time in omni patris et filii spiritus sancti God be with you.